Okay, here we go. Welcome to Bam Bam Industries. Just rolled out a premium grade of Herman Oak leather and haven't really walked through making a poster with anybody yet. And if you're watching this and wanting to know how to do it, that ain't really what this is for, but I'll show you what I do. And uh, start off with a 7 8. Herman, ounce, Herman Oak leather and then get the old pattern out and get ready to get with it and we'll just start right here I've already cut belts out of the other side of this so that's what winds up being left over here so just to do it backwards I'll cut it out of the center of the <laughs> center of the side usually I'd start on the end some people wonder if left-handed holsters are hard to do. And really it's the exact same pattern. You just kind of turn it over. And I've got a stack of leather over there that is all of the ones I didn't turn over for the left-handed orders. You figure out where you want her to go. I like to keep a little extra right there. I try and remember I'm making a video, but there's certain parts where you best pay mind to what you're doing. Some people don't mark them out with pins. I do, but I'm real careful about which pins I use. It's just a regular pin, but some bleed more than others. Some soak into the leather better like this one does. Some of them they'll leave a lot on there like that little spot right there. If you rub it, it'll run into the run into the leather. Then you got to, uh, oops. I, mean, I didn't prep everything, so where is my knife? We'll come over here so you quit talking to a blank screen. How about that? Can't wait, just talked to a guy today that's building me a knife, which is just like I've ever wanted. And then, right now, mostly I cut with this right here. Just a, just a box knife. And even if it's a brand, brand new blade, you still strop it. Polish up that metal, makes it glide easier. Naturally, I'm cutting out of the middle, so this ain't gonna be a real, be a little awkward. You also want to make sure you put your cutting board underneath there. That wouldn't be no bueno at all. And the straighter you cut it, the less you got to sand it later. I would have to say this is probably my least favorite part just because I don't know I wrestle with it a lot normally I would tilt this around and cut the other way but let's we'll see if we can't get it just like this I'm nobody to teach you, but if you're trying to do this the first time, one of the biggest tricks is keeping your knife straight. You can wall her that away, but you can't wall her that away. It'll just won't work out good. And I'm going to get this to the place where I have a small piece of leather to work on. Sure, the old board's going there. I have no idea if you can see what I'm doing in this or not. If you can't see and you don't find this real instructional, probably ought to watch one of them you have to pay for to do. And several people watch my belt video. 
a lot of people find it helpful. I guess if there's a purpose, it's just, I don't know, people might get a kick out of seeing how their holsters are made. There's a fair amount of pressure in this, if you're wondering. It's not unusual to get to that point and not have it cut through all the way. Well, I lost my fancy pause button. I got a new battery and lost the clicker. So I'm just rolling this up. I'm going to set her out of the way. I just got a first ever shipment. I'll be back. German oak leather, straight from the tannery. Man, is this stuff pretty. Pretty. Let's see. I guess you're in there and can see. One of the, one of the hopes is to keep my ugly mug out of the frame. Just cut out several holsters. Well, you're going to walk through what the process is. And then I decided to do this one kind of on the side and, well, make this video. That's that part, and I'm going to do it like this. I've got a round knife, if you don't know what that is. It's a death machine is what that is, and they're pretty pricey. Uh, and I've had it, I've sharpened it, had it professionally sharpened, everything. And if it's a uh, six ounce or below, it's real good to use. But the thickness I make holsters out of, boy, it can be a bear. Maybe the next video you watch, I'll have that new knife and have fallen in love with it. Well, that's that there. I'm going to change a thing or two around and we'll look at the next step that I go through and then uh, we'll see how far we go today. Of course, to you it'll be one whole seamless process, but it might be a while before I actually get this whole thing done. Be right back with you. Yeah, I'll show you briefly what I'm going to be working at. I can't really get all that in the frame there but you'll be able to get the gist of her. Got the holster cut out in the rough anyways. It's gonna get louder in a second. Then you just sand all the smooth, sand all the edges true and smooth. Then from there you can get to work on her, but uh, cut it out real nice, straight as you can. But you can see the little line still left. And I kind of do that on purpose, just, just my way. But I'm gonna sand it and true everything up. Man, it'll be even better. There's a pile of holsters. Maybe you can still hear me, maybe you can't. This one's a real rough grip. And it'll take off quite a bit. And you've probably seen people use these sanders and they use it a different way. Well, good for them, but this is how I do it. I'm going to zone out so I can focus here. This one's a finer grit. Yeah, we'll get along, get along.
That'll make it for that one. When it sands, it kind of rolls the edge forward. It can be a little deceptive as to whether or not you're taking off that line. Pretty much you keep it moving so you don't create divots. That may get it. It matches up. What do you know? That ought to get us there. Take off just a smidgen right there. Probably call that good. Well, we'll take it over and work just a little bit more on her. Well, here's hoping I got everything that I need. Don't know what the weather is like where you're at. By day, I'm a window cleaner. On rainy days like today, I work on being a YouTube Superstar. Well, you gotta have big dreams anyways. Biggest part of the holster right there. Making sure that line is uh, is right. Otherwise, the holster won't be right. And I've made this one one other time and thought I'd give a little, little more cushion right there. Other than that, I was happy with everything. Mark them lines out. And bring those down. The back side is going to be later on. I'll wind up gluing it. You got to know where to put the glue and where not to put the glue. And I suppose I just kind of eyeball it. If it turns out wrong, it's because I eyeballed it. Let's see, I know I moved that over just a little bit. There we go. I remember there was a time when I first started doing this, I had written steps. Tell me everything to do. It gets confusing until you've done it. Couple, three, four hundred times, then it gets a little clearer. Yeah, I just dawned on me. I'm not gonna be able to bang on this with that camera sitting right there. This is gonna tell me where I need to pound that slot at. And that I have to do next. So you might shake, rattle, and roll just for a second. Got this fancy gizmo. Single layer, it ain't that much ruckus, but it's it probably gonna rattle your teeth a little bit. I don't know if you can see that or not. There you go, you're in the screen. Okay, hang on, Dallas. Here we go. Made it through. All right, now that gives me a couple, of, a couple of things that I need. Yeah, 
stitch grooves or show me where to stitch later. A lot of rocket science in that name, ain't there? Part of it you have to freehand. And then there's a guided tool on, maybe show you here in a minute. And again, you got to know where to glue. Well, I don't know how much of that you can see or not. There we go. Oh, yeah. Because I was talking. This little mark here is going to tell me where to place this thing later. And where to bevel and where not to bevel. And then I'm going to cheat a little bit. I know that the line goes across there. So I'm going to give myself. I'm going to make sure first. Yeah, the line goes. This is telling me where I got a sole right here. Because this one's got a thumb break, so. You got to back off just the right measured distance. And there's a guesstimation in that for sure. That ought to get her. Here's hoping. Okay. Put up a couple of things. And uh, my water's running low. Just my personal deal, it bevels a lot better if it's wet. It's kind of weird, but water is the, makes everything work easier and also ruins it too. If you get water where it don't belong, well, it'll stain it before I, before I stain it on purpose. But with a little practice, Need some more water in my jar, but it will be totally unprofessional to be a YouTube sensation and walk away and leave you looking at nothing. And I've got that enough. Give this a little bit. And we. Part of the reasons things take so long is everything I do, I wind up wetting the leather, working the leather with the moisture in it in some regards or another, and then it takes time for it to dry. The degree in which it has to dry, that's, that's here and there changes, but uh, okay. One loud noise. I don't think you can see that. Giving a quick polish to my my beveler. If you can see the way the edges are, I don't know if you can. I'm not real concerned if you can. Now there's a rough edge and it's going to round them corners off. I'll try to remember to show it to you when I get done. But you don't want to do it here because there's two pieces joining together and you'd have a You'd have a divot in the middle. You don't want that. So that mark tells me where to start, where to stop. There's a stopping point coming up. Roll out of it and stop. Now you want to get the back side. See, so I'm not doing here because this will wind up being glued together. And again, you want the glued together portions to be flat. And if you bevel it, there would be a divot in between the two. I figured the internet was probably crying for another one of these videos. 
got over seven views of the other one. I figured the sponsors ought to be calling any time. I watched it three times. Wife watched it twice. I'm figuring somebody else besides my son watched it. I'm just kidding. I don't know how many hits it got. We're going to cut this short in a minute because I'm fixing to turn on the air conditioner. that edge there that's where the belt will be going through now yeah, I guess there's a little guesswork right there take this inside edge it's longer than it needs to be right now will be the thumb break I'll trim it off later and then down the back side Start the other way. That way I can start wherever I need to. On the one problem, I don't know where I need to. That'll be pretty close. Now it's even closer. <laughs> well, well, well. Okay, a little more of the freehand stuff. Ah, uh, if I had a better camera, I'd be zooming in right now and kind of show you what I'm doing. Putting the channel in there. That's where the stitch will wind up going later. Then you can see the rounded... Uh, what I showed you earlier was here. Here's a portion that's not beveled. And then it rounds it off nice and smooth on both sides. When it comes time to burnish, it makes it better overall. So that's done, that's done, that's done. I'm going to give a little notch there. But I ain't going to complete it just yet. That ain't the right tool. This one, I'm just going to make sure she's where I like her to be. And I'll start with this one. And that'll be the place where I stitch. That's why those beginning marks are so important, because if you ain't got that right, it ain't gonna... You have a good time making the holster, but it'll be a chew toy for Fred. That's my dog. If it don't work right. I'll stop right there. And I like to do it like this. This one has a thumb break. There's a couple ways I've done it. I think I found a better way I like how I did the last one. We'll talk about that later. But, uh, okay. Alright, put it where I can see what I'm doing. Bring, match those lines up. In a perfect world, when I sew that, it'll hit leather on the other side. Eh, yeah, it will. So, boom, boom, boom. Another step along the process. And now I guess I get to stamp it. So I'm going to take this, shut this off, and I'm going to spray the thing down with water. 
let it set for a little bit till it's ready to stamp and then uh, we'll look at that a little further how about that bam bam out well here's what happened next I use away take the uh, holsters and piece of leather and lay them out and I spray them with a the water bottle and then they get they turn dark brown uh, this magazine was sprayed just now it matches this holster and then so you can see it starts to turn back to the original color and then that is what we call cased and that just means the leathers absorb the more absorb the moisture and return to gosh starts returning to the uh, original color and then the has the moisture inside of the leather and you're able to stamp an impression and uh, first and foremost of course is the maker's mark and uh, of course when the weather's all these times you're working with the leather damp it's uh you got to pay mind to what you're doing because you can nick up nick the leather keep your fingernails short all this business because otherwise it'll it'll make you not happy and I'm gonna put it right there kind of taking a shine to putting it there some guys put their mark on front but I'm like I think the maker's mark ought to be something you can look for and know who made it but not really a portion of the decoration first thing everybody sees I got this high-speed press I think it's a half ton half ton arbor press I'll let you go right in there and make a mark on there real nice and let me focus like a laser beam for a minute or two because this is uh, one of them three percenter holsters what that means is i'm gonna put the mark right about there but it's a pretty tight squeeze into my press and forget the cameras here because i just don't want to screw this part up Gotta leave the spacing for the lettering. That'll get me right. If I ever figure out where I want this press, I'll bolt it in place. For now, that'll have to do. I think they call that a Spartan helmet. And then this one. Forget about the camera, folks. What you doing? If you get it crooked, it looks silly. That ought to make it. This one doesn't get any border around the edges. He just wanted these symbols in there. But hang on right there. I'll be right back. I was also going to put this flag in there if I can find it right quick. Of all the stamps I can't find, that's the one. I spend most of my time looking for what I need. I'm gonna pop, uh, take one quick look. I'm gonna give up here in a minute. We're on live here. This don't float real well. So, since I don't edit videos, we will pause this thing. Well, I found what I was looking for. If you ever wonder, these are just 3d stamps i used to beat on them with a mallet and a driver but this looks a lot better when you press them in there it's embarrassing if you get them upside down i'm gonna put that right there and give her a little pressure And then 
that's what you wind up with. Nah, that'd be a little much right there. We won't do that. That'll be all for that right there, I guess. Let me tackle that magazine and then we will <laughs> get back to you. And that might be all we do for a little bit. It's got to dry and then a diet. Well, we'll catch you next time. Okay, well, this next time, it's on the tripod. That's where we did the press work. <clears throat> I came along after the fact and finished up the magazine. Necessity is the mother of all inventions. That's just a folder rack that I uh, set stuff in with the fan blowing on it and hastens the drying process without getting it too warm. As long as we're here, that's the easy bake. And run the temperature up to about 100 sometimes. Right now it's sitting at 80. And when the holsters are wet and drying, that's what I do. And that's the one I just took out of there. It's still quite damp to the touch. I'm going to do one process now with it. Started boning in that. Really just forming it right now. And then let it dry a little more. And start cutting in the details. That's another story. We'll do it on this one later. <laughs>